some other people here. Sorry about that. Um, there are some other people in the room with me here who are also listening in and will be part of this conversation. We have Director Morgan Rogers. We have Projects Manager Kurt Kirby. We have Community Services Manager Amanda Moosley, and we have um, Emily Shively, the Marketing Coordinator, who are helping me run this Zoom meeting. Um, I just want to set some housekeeping items here. We are going to keep everybody on mute to minimize the background noise. And um, we will encourage you all to use the chat feature down below. We have somebody monitoring that for any questions or problems you might be having. We're going to go ahead and um, feel free to put in any questions at any time during this meeting. We're going to be showing a video and we're also going to be putting up an input survey. And we're going to address all those questions at the end. But if we go along and you have a question, please feel free to put it in there. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a minute here just to you know, focus on what the goal of this meeting is. And that is to collect meaningful public input to inform the decisions that will be made um, after, in, in developing this park for everybody in your neighborhood. So that being said, I want to go ahead and have Emily go ahead and launch our video so you can see a concept of what can happen in your park and get excited about it. So Emily, launch away. Welcome back. We hope you all enjoyed that video and it gave you a good idea of what could be done in that space. It's a beautiful wooded area um, and it is about 1.6 acres and it is intended to be a passive use neighborhood park. And when we say passive use, we mean that there's not going to be any ball fields that are going to be going in there. There's no large venues that are going in there. It's simply a neighborhood park where people can go enjoy peace and quiet. And there may be a play area for kids and some pavilions or or uh, picnic tables, but there's a lot of opportunities in there to put a variety of amenities. And that's what we're gonna look at today. Um, the rendering, which is what you're looking at, that has been submitted to the public is simply a concept. None of this is set in concrete. It is just to give people an idea of what the possibilities are for this piece of property. None of the amenities have been decided on and that is why it's so important that you're all here today so that we can go ahead and make those decisions and get your input on that. One aspect of this rendering that is not shown on there is the trees that are gonna be on the property. And it's real important for everybody to realize that this is a beautifully wooded area and that is our intent is to keep as many trees on that property as possible. 
There are some disease trees on there. There's some dangerous trees. And obviously if we put in some amenities, there are gonna be trees that are gonna to need to be removed. But our goal is to keep this as wooded and as beautiful and as natural as possible. It is a great piece of property and we want it to feel like you're out in the woods, just enjoying nature and relaxing in a peaceful place for everybody. Um, we're gonna go ahead and ask for your input right now. We are gonna be putting up a survey and you're gonna need your smartphone for this. Um, so Emily, if you don't mind, go ahead and put that up. I'm gonna give everybody a minute to take a look at this. At the, you'll see at the top of the page is the website that you can go to on your phone. So go ahead and take a moment to get to menti.com. And then you're gonna go ahead and put in the code that is up there, the 46196469. And that will take you to this screen that you see. And give everybody a minute to go ahead and do that. Ah, I see people are already jumping on. All right, so the first question here is how long have you lived in the city of Alpharetta? Please go ahead and put your answer in. I see answers come in. What you're seeing on the screen is the uh, real-time answers that everybody's putting in here. And we know approximately how many people are on this call, so we're waiting for that many people to answer. <laughs> If you are unable to do this right now, um, afterwards we'll show you how to get to the link on our website so that you can go ahead and complete it right there. So there's an opportunity to, to put your information in after we're done with this presentation today and we'll walk you through it. Okay. That look about right guys. Okay. Looks like all the inputs are there and we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next question. Do you live within a 10 minute walk to Waters Road Park? That is approximately a mile from Waters Park. Okay. Ah, people are answering quick. <laughs> Okay, do you have children under the age of 16 living in your home? Okay. I'll go ahead and go to the next one, Emily. Boy, people are ahead of us here. If you answered yes to having children under the age of 16 at home, what are their ages? If you do not, just put zero, please. Okay. How do you see the community using the space in the future? And this is where you can put in your suggestions. Uh, great suggestions coming in, folks. Thank you. All right. Looks like we have a lot of great suggestions there. Thank you. Okay. Looks like we might be ready to go on to the next one. Or are people still coming in? Okay. Yeah, go ahead and go to the next one. All right, please rank these potential park amenities in order of importance to you and your family. Okay. 
Michael. Okay, it looks like the bars have stopped moving, so maybe we can go into the next question here. What activities do you see you and your family doing in this future space? And you can pick up to three. What kinds of things would you guys go over there and enjoy doing? Great ideas here too. Thank you, folks. Okay, looks like our words have stopped moving. So we're moving on to the next question. Since this park borders a neighborhood, what kind of privacy screenings most appeal to you? You have three choices there, one with just natural landscape, one with a wooden fence and one with a combination. All righty. Looks like everybody's in. Thank you so much for, for all that input that you gave us. That's something that is going to be able to guide us and give us um, a good direction about what it is that you see happening on that piece of property and to make it a great park. Um, that ends our input survey. Now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the questions that were presented to us and see if we can answer those for you. Okay, one of the questions was, how will left turns be handled exiting the park? Um, that's a very good question. And I, I think I'm correct in answering, Morgan Rogers is sitting here next to me, but I think I'm correct in answering that um, public, public works is gonna be the one and public safety will be working in conjunction with them to determine what the best way is in and out of that park. Um, you know, we realized that exiting that park and entering that park, you're actually in a turn lane turning right onto water. So that is going to be something that we're really going to need to look at as to whether or not there will be left turns allowed out of there or not. Um, let's see. Um, let's see how many trees will remain. Uh, like I said earlier, our goal is to leave as many trees as possible. I think you all saw in that video how beautiful that piece of property is and we wanna maintain that feel. And like I mentioned, um, there are some diseased trees on there, some dangerous trees, and we will have to remove some if we put some amenities in certain areas, but the goal is to keep as many as possible. Um, let's see. Can you speak to plan security for both parking and the park? Would one of you like to address that? I'm gonna let Morgan Rogers jump on here. Yeah, um, we'll certainly plan for, for security of the park and of the parking lot. As part of the design process, we have representatives from public safety that will be on the design team. And so we're, we're making sure that we plan the security for the park and the and the parking as we go along. Uh, don't know whether that's gonna uh, be lighting or what, but that will certainly be part of the planning process and will be part of the design that we bring back to the public and eventually to, to city council for approval. Okay, down to the next question here. Since the park is intended for nearby residents, why have any parking lot at all? Um, because that is, it is a city park and it is open to anybody who would like to come visit the park. While we envision this park being used by residents around the park, mostly it is open to the public. Next question. 
Okay, if you don't allow left turns out of the park, drivers would feel the need to U-turn in the Laurel Pond Water Street. We would not want traffic in our community entrance. Completely understood. And that is, again, something we would work with public safety and um, public works on to ensure that uh, we have the easiest um, egress out of that park so that it doesn't impact the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, I think Morgan just, you already addressed that one about lighting in the park, okay. Um, it would be ideal to have cameras for security. Again, that's something we would work with public safety on to determine um, whether or not we need those there and um, if we do need them, where they would go. Um, let's see, is, uh, I'm sorry. Is a vision to make trails natural like Autry Mill instead of putting in lots of hard surfaces? Um, I think our vision there is that the walking trails would be mulch trails. Is that one of the ideas? We'll let Kirk Kirby answer that one. He's the projects manager. Yeah, the, uh, the, tra the trails uh, will be a soft surface. It will not be hard surface. Uh, it, it could be a combination of mulch and or what we call trail mix, which is basically a slate. Um, but we do not intend on putting, uh, making any of the trails hard surface. Thank you, Kirk. Goodness for rolling chairs. Let's see here. Next one. Sorry, I'm having a hard time scrolling here with my laptop. I apologize for the delay here. Um, let's see. There we go. Will there be bike racks? That is definitely something we can consider because is there a connection to the alpha loop? Yeah, there, there will almost be assuredly uh, bike racks um, in that park. I mean, I mean, you know, again, I, I hate to say that because it sounds like we've already planned the park, but all of our community parks throughout uh, Alpharetta have bike racks and, and I would be I'm pretty sure there will be back racks there. And we know how close that is to mm -hmm. the Greenway there down by Rock Mill and the, the connection that comes out by the fire station. Mm -hmm. So bike racks in that park would be a great, great thing to have if people are going to be riding from the Greenway up to that park. Um, if, if you must have parking, why not use part of the lot at the church instead of using a valuable park real estate for a parking lot? let you address that one. You know, we have actually talked to the church um, about the possibility of using uh, some of their parking, <clears throat> excuse me, for the park, and they have um, verbally agreed to that. So we will certainly pursue that as we're moving forward. Again, the, the, the issue, one of the issues becomes accessibility, ADA accessibility of that park. So I think no matter what, we're going to have to have a couple of parking spots up uh, uh, in the parking in the park itself for ADA parking. But again, we're going to work through that as the plan unfolds and uh, then we will have those conversations. But um, the, the church has verbally agreed to allow us uh, to have uh, to use some of the parking for the park. Okay, um, let's see. Back to the question. Okay. Okay, when will decisions be made about the park amenities, playground, dog park pavilion? Is there another meeting to decide that? So the, the, we're gonna be using a uh, design build concept on this particular park. We're gonna get, we're taking all of this input uh, that we're gonna get here as well as the meeting tomorrow at Preston Ridge. And we're gonna give that to, a, uh, to our, who, whoever we decide is gonna be our designer on this park. They will come up with a design that will be, uh, again, we'll be coming back to the public, probably through uh, a Zoom type of meeting, sharing that design, um, and then we'll be able to tweak it based on opinions there. And then we'll uh, ultimately, uh, it'll go to Mayor and Council for approval before we do any construction. Thank you. Okay. I want to make sure I don't miss any questions here. Um, I think having a soft surface is ideal, especially for people walking dogs, because the asphalt gets too hot for paws in the summer. Yes, it would be. Um, and again, like Kurt said, we will be doing a soft surface out there for the trails. 
I did that one. Can you confirm that parking space is a requirement? Public park doesn't equal the need to have parking. No, there is, there's no requirement that we have to have parking. But again, I think we, we have to have, uh, we have to allow uh, all of our residents access to that, not just the ones that are walking. Plus, if, you know, you can still be within walking distance and not be able to make that. And you also, you know, you have a lot of uh, folks that have children that, um, you know, if they're one year old and they're a mile away, they, they simply can't make that walk. So we, uh, again, we haven't made any decisions, but we, we feel like it is, uh, uh, we need parking in and around the park. And again, we'll see how that, see how the design goes and, and uh, go from there. We don't want to give up, we don't want to give up parkland to parking. We, we try to minimize that, but at the same time, we have to take all of our residents into, into consideration. Okay. How, uh, how are restrooms serviced? Again, is a restroom required? Seems like a safety issue could attract the wrong crowd. Again, are restrooms required? No, they're not. Uh, but we also know that folks coming to the park, um, uh, a, a lot of them are gonna have children and you know, they need access to the restroom. So uh, we want, we're not gonna be, I'm sure we're not gonna be putting in a large restroom. Uh, we have just put in a, a small restroom at Windward Park uh, that we just developed. And when we, we are in the process of developing Mid Broadwell Park, and we've put even a smaller restroom in that particular park. So uh, safety, as far as safety goes, um, all of the restrooms that we're uh, putting in our parks now um, have uh, automated locks that will lock at a particular time. They'll also have automated lights on in the restroom. So as the public safety rides by and it's midnight and that light is on in that restroom, they know that something's going on in that restroom and they'll be able to go in and check that out. They'll have access to that. So we, again, the, then the restrooms are serviced daily. We have someone that comes in, uh, we have a uh, service that comes in daily and cleans the restrooms, make sure that they're, they're adequately uh, stocked and clean. Uh, because one thing we all know is that um, one of the things that we know in, in our business is that two things that people notice real quickly is if you don't pick up the trash or if you don't clean the restroom, that's the first thing people notice. So we can assure the, the residents and our residents that we're going to keep that part clean, we're going to keep it safe, and we'll keep it uh, uh, usable by everybody. All right, next question. Um, can you answer that one? As the park elevation is higher than some of the surrounding residences, will people will someone be looking at the impact of headlights, park lights, parking lights be considered as potentially impacting residents that have upstairs windows and privacy? Absolutely, absolutely, they will. And again, this is a this is not going to be a, a park that uh, we envision it being open after dark. Um, this will be one of those uh, neighborhood parks that will close at dark, uh, at dusk, as they say. So yes, we'll certainly be looking to minimize any impact that we have um, on the residents as far as any headlights or park lights. But I think, I think as 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 if you again using uh, 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 Windward Park, Mid Broadwell, and Cogburn Road as an examples, we don't we don't have many little park lights in there, and that's uh, by design. It's just to to allow, again, our public safety folks to see what's going on. So it'll be minimal and we'll certainly take all that into consideration. All right. Uh, somebody asked, is there parking at the exercise circuit park across from Avalon? Uh, no, there's not. And uh, that, that's, uh, that particular park was built by the development by Avalon uh, as part of the agreement. They agreed to build 
uh, an exercise park within walking distance of um, their uh, venue. Um, and so it does not have any parking uh, and it was designed that way. I'm having trouble moving this up and down, sorry. Okay, what is the timeline to begin building the park? I'm gonna turn you over to Kirk Kirby for that one. Let's say the design will be uh, concept uh, will be we'll be picking a design team uh, probably late spring of this year um, and probably go into construction um, uh, next year um, in 2023. Uh, so usually it is hard to give a straight timeline right now. We're looking at probably opening the park uh, in um, late 23 or early 24. Thank you. In relation to waste management, would it be possible to have recycling receptacles or a water bottle refill station? Yes, the, the, we, all of the water, uh, uh, what do they call them? Water, water fountains. Water fountains. fountains. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> all the water fountains that we're putting into the parks now have the water bottle refill station on them um, because we know a lot of folks, you know, carry their own water bottle right now. And we'll certainly make, um, con uh, make uh, consider recycling receptacles uh, at, at the park um, as, as uh, um, we'll certainly consider that, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think I think I got all the questions. All right, Amanda's shaking her head. Does anybody have any other questions they'd like to ask before we move on? Oh, oh. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, so what we want to do right now is we want to be able to. Um, I want Emily, can you go back on the community engagement page? Just want to show you some. I know this was up for a little bit and I'm sure you had a chance to look at it, but I just want to look at it one more time. We do have some other community input meetings that are coming up. Uh, we have another Waters Road Park community input on Thursday out at Preston Ridge Community Center at six o'clock, and that is in person. That will not be on Zoom. And then we also have um, Union Hill Park community input meetings that are coming up and you can see those on there as well. One is an in-person, I'm sorry, is that right? They're both in person. They're both in person, yes, that's correct, on Tuesday and Wednesday out at Union Hill Park um, that week of the 15th and 16th. Um, so this information, I believe, is also on our website. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to go ahead and show you how to get on the website. If you missed putting your input or doing the survey, or if you want to direct other people to this, if they weren't able to meet the, meet, make this meeting or make the meeting on Thursday. Um, so you're going to go to the City of Alpharetta website the main page and you're going to go to the government tab over there on the left and there's a drop down menu you're going to go down to recreation parks and cultural go ahead and click on that once you get to that page you're going to scroll down and you're going to go to the parks bond referendum button there with the little girl on the swing and scroll down and that shows where all of our projects are in the parks and then you're going to get this is where all the different park projects are housed. So you can look on any of these and see where we are and what we're doing with them. But there's a Waters Road Park there and you can click on that. And it basically has what we just went over and it also has the input right there. So if you click on community input, it'll show where you can do the online survey. And then once we get the Thursday information put in, you will we'll get this put into this section here and you will see all of the live results in one spot. So that'll give you a good opportunity to go on and see what everybody's thinking about. The other input or the other input opportunities are right below. It gives you all those information, all that information. And again, if you're looking at other projects, you can go back to the page before and look at all the different parks and what's going on with them and any other input opportunities that you might want to attend. Um, after, oh, I already I said all that. 
So that is it for us for today. I want to thank everyone for being on this and giving us this very important input from all of you. Um, again, if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can get on. Can they get on to that and ask a question on the website? OK, I'm going to get OK. If you have any further questions, I can give you an email address that you can go ahead and email it to. You can send it to recreation at alpharetta.ga.us, as in Sam. I'll say it one more time. Recreation at alpharetta.ga.us. And that will come directly to me and I will be able to either answer it for you or get it to the people who can't answer it for you. Again, thank you so much for being here and we are very excited and we hope we've gotten you a little more excited about what can be the possibility in that beautiful piece of property that is in your neighborhood. And we look forward to more input down the road and sharing what we come up with, with all the information that you've given us. Thank you very much and we hope you have a great day.